Then we uh, continue with the third presentation of this morning, and I'd like to invite the people from the River Moor to give, yeah, coming, to give their presentation about the River Moor, the prize winner, European prize winner 2014. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, uh, my name is Jörg Raderbauer, and I'm the managing director of Freiland Environmental Consulting Engineers. You certainly expect that I will give the presentation of the river, but I won't. And there is a reason and I want to explain. We started in, with these projects in 1995 and the driving force of all these projects was Peter Bartel. He was my employee, my first employee, my right hand and my friend. He handled these projects till 2009, very successfully, and then he died on a heart attack. He left a gap, it was so big I can tell you. Dina Conradi had to fill this gap and it wasn't easy, but she did it. She took over the running projects, gave new energy, which wasn't easy at this time, and she was the driving force for the application. So I will give over the floor to her, and I want to thank her for her, for her efforts and for her energy. Dina, the floor is yours. Um, so thank you for the pleasant introduction. <clears throat> um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still very surprised and excited that the River Moor won the European River Prize. And it's a great honor for us because the other finalists were good competitors and we didn't expect it till the end. The River Prize is for the whole project team, a great achievement for the river restoration work at the River Moor in the recent years. On the other hand, it is also an invitation to continue the pursuit path in the future, and we hope the River Prize will be a contribution to improve the public awareness for the River Moor. Um, so I want to say thank you to the judge to honor the River Prize, uh, the River Moor, and of course, thanks to the whole project team for the great teamwork. It's a great pleasure for me um, to present you the European River Prize winner 2014, the River Moor. Um, for the ones who didn't see the presentation yesterday, um, the River Moor is located in the south of Austria and is with 298 kilometers, the biggest river in the province of Styria, with a total length of 453 kilometers. <laughs> um, in the upper reaches, the river Moor flows in a narrow valley and had in former times a fluctuating river course. In the lower reaches, the river Moor flows in a flat landscape and had a braided river course with enormous alluvial forests with regular floodings. The systematic river regulation of the river Moor began at the end of the 19th century. Distributaries were cut off and large areas were drained in order to intensify agricultural land use. The alluvial forests were reduced and the channel riverbed led to a reduction of the river dynamic and had a loss of habitats. So a straightened river course with no dynamic remained. But not only the land use had an impact, um, on the river system also the intensive expansion of the hydropower plants which started after the Second World War. This led to additional alteration of the river ecology, affected the river continuum and the sediment transport. Especially in the upper reaches, a great deal of chemical contamination followed, caused by a lot of industry. The situation in the 1980s became unbearable and people started rethinking. As you can see in the picture at the top, um, the, chemical, the chemical conditions were very bad and people were driven away from the river. So, but what happened? New programs for ecological regeneration found their beginning. And the sanitation of water quality started and first trends towards nature oriented river engineering came up. Now, as you can see in the picture at the bottom, the chemical conditions are very well again. 
big changes came on with new big challenges and the new motto was heading to new shores. Um, a lot of programs started. Scientific analysis, declaration of nature reserves, management plans, and so on. The upper moor and the border section with the last flowing sections became the U, U Natura 2000 status. And the measures elaborated in the policy concept have been implemented in the recent year in a number of projects co-financed by the EU. River restoration began especially in the reaches with nature protected sites and where the hydropower influ influence is low. Overall, we have five big EU funded projects along the upper moor, a 90 kilometer stretch along the border to Slovenia, a 32 kilometer stretch became special attention. <coughs> the first project um, started in the late 90s in the border section to Slovenia and a follow-up project in 2002. In 2003, the first EU-funded project started at the Upper Moor, and then again, 2009, the third one, again at the border section with Slovenia. And actually, we are still working on the second live project at the Upper Moor. So, but what were the targets of the restoration projects? The general objective of all the projects on the River Moor is the restoration, the improvement, and the long-term protection of the character, characteristic river landscape. This is an important requirement for maintaining rare endangered species of fauna and flora listed in the Fauna Flora Habitat Directive. The individual restoration measures enable the reconstruction of lost habitats in some areas, the reactivating of flooding areas, the stabilization of the bad load balance, and the growing of the public awareness. Um, what is particularly noteworthy here is what makes the great access of the overall project. From my point of view, it is the intensive cooperation of various stakeholders and the experiment to cont contribute of different interests in, in the management. From the beginning, all those st uh, affected were involved. The diverse interests of the economic water usage, energy sector, nature conversation, mountain torrent and avalanche control, municipalities and owner of fishing rights and the public were integrated and solutions were developed jointly. The technical support and scientific support came from various planners and universities. There was a constant exchange of technical knowledge and the learned lessons were a large enrichment for the following project. So a little bit learning by doing. Very important is the cross-border cooperation because of a length of 45 kilometers, the river Moor forms the national border to Slovenia in the southeast of Austria. All important measures for flood protection as well as for the habitat conversation and the improvement of the coordinated, are coordinated in a bilateral river commission with the Slovenian partners. The countries are always in continuous information and know-how transfer to improve the conditions of the river Moor. But now, I want to show you some pictures of the area and the protected goods and, of course, of the implementations. Um, because the main questions are, of course, um, what habitats are the protective goods and what habitats do we want to get back? And, of course, for who do we need these habitats? The whole river course is characterized by elder ashes and floodplain forests, and at the upper moor we have vegetation with bitter willows. Here are some examples of the protective goods of both river sections, amphibians, mussels, and of course, our holiest protective group, the Danube salmon. Here the main problems are the impassable migratory barriers and of course, the lack of spawning grounds. Because of the straightened river course, there are still less gravel banks and fish shelters. And not to forget the birds, which have a different demand on the habitat and are, of course, also dependent on the food availability. And the food variety in turn depends on the water quality and, for example, of the morphology. 
So in a nutshell, we can say everything depends on the free movement of the river. So here you can see one of the biggest branches at the upper moor with a length of 1.2 kilometers and approximately four hectare succession area for the Louisville forest. On the left side, um, the construction site in 2006. And on the right, you can see the development in 2014. Um, the latest measure just finished a few weeks ago. Um, at the Lesser Au, also at the Upper Moor. Here, a 900 kilometer long branch was created with a lot of, lot of amphibian ponds and forest developed area. Here, Big Measure was implemented in 2006, and it's going to be extended this winter down and upstream. So the whole measure will cover an area of seven hectares and a length of three kilometers. The main target of the follow-up project was to intensify the effects of the overall project and the already, meant, already implemented stepping stones of the first project were concentrated by nearby set measures. In Gostov, at the border section, a thousand meter long and 150 meter wide stretch was created. The gravel carried out by flood water should stabilize the bed of the river moor and the groundwater level. And the last example, this measure serves the purpose of ecological and hydrological improvement of the river moor on a length of 1,400 meters by dismantling the left bank. The removal of the bank protection led to a strong erosion, as you can see in the picture on the right, um, the formation of a natural shoreline. Eroding banks and gravel bars from you form the new varied habitats. So in total, 28 measures were implemented. 21 kilometers are affected by restoration projects. And in total, 12.5 million euro were invested in renaturation measures. But at all these great measures, one big challenge might not to be forgotten. There's a need for more ecological improvement, but also the need to increase renewable energy production. So what to do? Now we have river restoration against renewable energy. <laughs> to overcome the conflict between hydropower expansion and nature protection, a management plan was, has been established for the river moor. And the plan has been aligned between energy providers and river experts. The core is to balance the interest of the energy sector and those of the river protection and rest restoration focusing on the river ecology aspects. Mm, how to combine these different interests in the future of river use? We started a process with all important stakeholders and intensive exchange of interest and ideas. Aiming for a compromise in order to reach the goals of European and national directives and laws, a new planning instrument was started. The main objective was to classify river stretches for their further use. And we have three categories. The first one, the ecological priority zone. Here, Preservation and improvement of the ecological state has priority. The second one are the trade-off zones. Here, hydropower development is only possible if no ecological deterioration is caused. And the third zones are the particular designation zones. These are the mostly affected river stretches already used for hydropower purpose. Most of them are already heavily modified water bodies. Um, important ecological targets could be addressed during the designation process of the management plan. In areas of extended free-flowing river sections, further development of hydropower production is permitted with the ban of any deterioration of the ecological state. The central part of the free-flowing sections have therefore been classified as ecological priority zones. These zones are excluded from any further hydropower development, as well as a section where ecological improvement measures have been implemented in recent years. 
The management plan is a legal basis for regional programs and is valid until 2022. To sum it up, the individual restoration measures enabled the reconstruction of lost habitats in some areas and the reactivation of retention areas for flood drainage and the ensuring of the ecological status. The management plan enabled the unification of different interests of the EU Water Framework Directive, the EU Flood Directive and the EU Renewable Energy Directive and the foundations to comply with the mandatory energy targets while maintaining and improving the ecological status. Um, a significant factor for the implementation of existing measures in addition to all over stakeholders and the participation of the population. The support of the population has made the overall project more so successful. The awareness of the ecological importance of the moors a living leisure and recreation space has prom promoted by involving and informing the population in the affected areas. Another long-term objective is to improve public relations in terms of dissemination of know-how and information, environmental education, and rising of environment awareness um, among the local population. So, and finally, just some impressions um, of our work with the public. Um, along with many other school projects, we have launched a student competition. Pupils created drafts of information boards and benches, which were implemented at the Upper Moor at the life project site at the measures. Um, scientific classes, which were supported by the monitoring teams, chemical analysis, electrofishing, and so on. And a lot, of, a lot of press conferences were given, festivals for the public were organized, and sporty activities were offered and combined with the nature conversation. And a lot of field excursions were organized to exchange interests and experience between the public, scientists, and planners. Um, so the main quest question, what we're going to do with the money we won yesterday. Um, <laughs> in order to keep up the growing awareness for the environmental aspect in the public, um, the main vision is to invest in public information provisions and partaking planning process. It is of special importance to promote environmental awareness for the youngest among us. So we will orientate ourselves by the winner of the 2013 European Rural Prize and will work on the children awareness. So and now we are going on um, to with our Slovenian partners to prepare for pre spring. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>